Well, good morning or good evening, depending if you're listening or listening and watching. This is For Your Health, a presentation of Medical Pharmacy, and uh, in studio with us today, or actually in the conference room, uh, is uh, Allison Schwartz. And Allison, good day to you, and uh, uh, today we're talking, ooh, current events. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of current events. Uh, yeah, it's American, American Pharmacist Month, so it's one of those, know your medicine, know your pharmacist, so... You know, take advantage of your pharmacist out there, no matter which pharmacy you go to, just make sure you have some kind of relationship with your pharmacist, you ask them questions you need to ask them, and make sure that you're getting the medicines you need and taking them the way you're supposed to take them. That was number one. And if you have a problem asking your pharmacist, you need to maybe consider yeah, you should you should feel comfortable um, and confident enough that your pharmacist is there to help you and um, you know take that time and for you and you know I know everybody gets busy and everybody wants their medicines right now and it sometimes gets hectic so even if you can say you know look I got some questions I know you're busy can I call you later when would be a good time or you know give them your number and have them call you when they're you know kind of caught up or have a minute but if you're not comfortable enough to do that then you know think about what, what pharmacist do you have a, could, could you get a good relationship with so you're comfortable to ask those questions okay. some other things going on this month it is breast cancer awareness month as always it is the pink month um, you know and it last couple of years we have had some t-shirts we do have some t-shirts coming we're gonna do it a little differently this year um, the past couple of years we had you go on Facebook and make a post about how did breast cancer affect you uh, this year we actually think we're going to do them as a um, as a sale, but only like five dollars. But all of the proceeds will go to our local cancer center, so um, it's no, no money that's coming back to us. We will buy the shirts, um, and I'm not sure how many we'll buy, so they may be limited. Um, so we're working on that, but they are getting ordered. So just check with us if you're interested in those breast cancer. We have a, a cool new design this year that I really like, so hopefully it'll it'll go over well. Well, as we talk current events, a lot of people think, oh, it's, uh, you're talking about news current events. And uh, we kind of are, since right now, as we speak and as we record this uh, in Washington, it looks like the government is shut down because of the Affordable Health Care Act or whatever anybody wants to call it. You have got some research. You, you know, I do. And I just, you know, I, I just want to tell them to quit being three year olds, for heaven's sakes. I mean, you know, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. I think that, well, and then my main problem is, is probably what everybody else's is, is they're still getting paid while everybody else is getting shut down. And so that's just, that's wrong. And I don't think that's how this country's meant to be run. But um, enough about my opinions on the matter. Let's just talk about the act itself. And is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And I'm not going to truly give you an opinion on what I think about it. I, and I will in a roundabout uh, way, but just, it's more to do with lots of things, not just the act itself. So what's the purpose of it? Okay, so it's supposed to allow for better access to medical care. That includes medications, surgeries, doctor visits, everybody should have access to care. I agree with that. Okay, it promotes improved efficiency. Well, Lord knows there are days at Medica Pharmacy when we are so busy that I would love to find a way to be more efficient. So I agree with that. Reducing medical errors, that's hugely important. Um, better care coordination and implementing the best medical practices. Okay, all those are great things. So basically, the whole act is addressing the supply side of healthcare, okay? Making it more accessible, improving the processes around it, improving the systems to reduce inefficiencies and medical errors. Great idea. Problem with it is, is nobody's really touching at the biggest issue that's at the heart of this country. The issue that's halting the whole process, why we can't move forward. It's crippling our budget. We can't afford this anymore. Uh, we've gotta be um, globally competitive we have to stay, keep our nation secure. Overall, healthcare is affecting na national security because are, we have a sick, fat nation and a bunch of sick, fat people cannot take care of this country. Okay, we can't fight the military and we're gonna be bankrupt. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, we already are bankrupt. So we're in a world of mess, right? We're in a world of mess. So wh where do we go from here? We have this ha act that's supposed to reform healthcare, but in reality, is it really reforming healthcare? Okay, we've got to find a way to become less sick and get more health. So, you know, our, it says in the act that we're supposed to be to implementing the best medical practices. But what if we aren't? What if we aren't? So, you know, my, one of the things I talk about a lot, I've talked about it before, and that's where I'm going to start with this whole health care act, is obesity. Now, a lot of people have started calling obesity diabetes because pretty much if you're obese, you're going to be insulin resistant, your blood pressure goes up, you're going to end up with diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and all these chronic diseases. So we like to call it diabetes, diabetes. So two thirds of Americans are overweight. 
Okay, that's a pretty well-known fact. And it's pretty well-known that this obesity and diabetes is the hidden cause of most of our chronic illnesses. So that's maybe a good place to start, right? If we could conquer obesity, we'd save a lot of money. Here's a scary fact. Healthcare providers only talk about weight loss in 6.3% of office visits. All right, well, so if 63% of our nation is overweight, but we're only talking about it 6.3% of the time, I don't think that's enough. The same research found that people with high blood pressure and diabetes are less likely now than they were 12 years ago to receive talks by their healthcare provider about losing weight and lifestyle management. And it's like 46 and 59% respectively. Okay, so th does that make, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. So surely it doesn't make sense to anybody else. If one of our biggest problems is obesity, why are we not talking about it? We don't wanna make people feel bad. I, I understand that, I do, I really do. I mean, it's, it is really hard. You don't wanna have somebody walk in your office and have them sit down with all those health problems and go, well, you're fat. I mean, that's just rude. Yeah. But you have to tell them the truth. It's our jobs as healthcare providers um, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, if you're involved in the healthcare field, it is your job to be truthful with people. And yes, you have to be professional about it and find a way that you hopefully are not going to hurt their feelings, but you need to tell people what they need to hear and not what they want to hear. And we, we got to go there. And, you know, something I've said before and said again is healthcare is cheap. Okay, I'm sorry, healthcare, yes, healthcare is cheap, but being sick is very, very expensive. So, and somebody's trying to call us again. They did this on our last show, didn't yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to call you. They, they want to talk to me, I'm, or maybe they want to yell at me. I'm not sure. But you don't have to be sick to get healthy. But if you're not healthy, you're going to get sick, right? That's the big thing. I met, um, during this past bourbon festival, I actually met a cardiologist from Baltimore. And he had a great analogy that really hit home. And he said, our current healthcare system is like we're keeping people from drowning. But in reality, we need to teach them how to swim. And I thought, that is a really great analogy, right? Really good. So, you know, the problem is we've become so symptom-focused in this country with healthcare. You go in and you don't feel good and you don't have energy, so they say you're depressed. But maybe you're really not sleeping well. I mean, it, it kind of goes to the, let's say you have high blood pressure. Why do you have high blood pressure? Let's give you a medicine for the high blood pressure, but let's not figure out why is it. Maybe you gained weight. Maybe it's a diet. So we're focusing on the symptoms. And, I mean, you can tell that all the prescriptions out there that are being prescribed, they're not making a dent in it. We're still overweight. We still have chronic diseases. The costs are skyrocketing. Nothing is improving. With all the prescription drugs we have out there, we're not getting any better. So we've been raised in you know, medical schools and pharmacy schools and nursing schools that we need to follow evidence-based medicine. But unfortunately, we're not practicing evidence-based medicine. We're practicing reimbursement-based medicine. And, uh, and I'm going to explain that insurance companies dictate what you can and cannot do and doctors and nurses and pharmacists we have to do what we're going to get paid to do and that's a sad truth because when you allow someone else to dictate how you provide health care you're probably not doing it in the best way i had a phone call this morning on our voicemail from a provider here in town and you could just hear the extreme frustration in her voice as she called in a different insulin for her patient not the insulin she wanted her patient on but it was the only insulin that the the health insurance would pay for and she said they dictate that the patient has to try this and fail it before they will pay for the one that I want to give her now why should we make a patient fail if the doctor really feels that this is what's going to work why do we have to make them fail another treatment doesn't that just prolong thing and add to cost I would think it does so it's very very frustrating so we we've got to find a way all of us to stay healthy and it starts with you know this horrific, toxic, industrial, processed food, fast food diet that we eat, the sedentary lifestyles that we live, the stress that we don't manage, and all the environmental toxins. So access to care is important, and you know, kudos to the Affordable Care Act for granting access, but we have got to focus in on getting healthy, and it's crippling this country. The Health Care Act does offer some benefits in the sense of it, it encourages or will pay for a physical year. Some people don't even get that. The Correct. basic uh, physical that everybody should have. Again, some can't afford it, but now we're told we should all get one as part of the affordable health care. And, yeah, and, that's, and that is a, you know one of the good functions. And there's lots of good parts of it and there's lots of bad parts of it. And 
And then there's so much confusion. I mean, I don't know if anybody watched Jimmy Kimmel, but he was out on the street asking people, what do you, and I actually do not like to refer to it as Obamacare. It is the Affordable Care Act, and that is what I call it. But when you go out there and interview the general public, they think that's two different things. And it's not, it's the same thing. So when there's that much confusion, I mean, you know, we're doing a horrible job and we're, we're, we're fighting that losing battle. But, you know, one of the parts of the Affordable Care Act is I know there's a lot of people that are opposed to abortion and the Affordable Care Act, you know, grants free contraceptive, which, you know, and you may not be, you may not be a fan of that. And I don't have an opinion on it either way. It's a patient's choice what they want to do. But it's funny that we're already starting to see insurance companies finagle that because we actually had this in our pharmacy this week that there was a birth control pill for a girl and it wasn't free and it was a generic inexpensive one should have been a zero dollar copay and it wasn't so i actually called the insurance company and i said you know I, they've been free for a while mm -hmm. why is it suddenly ten dollars oh well some of them are free but not all of them are so we only have certain ones that we can allow to be free so again they're dictating what medicine a, a girl should take and at some point we need to address the fact that the people providing health care really have their hands tied and we need to take the people that are processing the claims and forcing the decisions out of the loop. And it'll never be affordable as long as we're letting insurance companies rule it because they make too much money filling prescriptions and doing all this other stuff and all the underdoor kickbacks they get from drug companies. And, you know, as a pharmacist, I should want people to fill lots and lots of prescriptions. I mean, that's, you know, people look at me a little strange when I tell them I don't agree with some of the prescriptions out there. It is my job to fill prescriptions, but it's also my job to educate you to help make you healthy. And when insurance companies can make the kind of money that they make while everybody else can't afford it, that's just wrong. And, and that's why medical change added to its name the word wellness. Exactly. Uh, is because, it, yes, we take care of people that are sick, but keeping them well is better for everybody. Better. Yeah. We're, we're, and, and I'm just, and I know a lot of people know I'm, I'm extremely passionate about it, and I actually have a, a friend of mine who runs a certain liquor store here in town who loves to give me crap about the fact that I'm so <laughs> anti-processed food. I mean, he, you know, says that you can come over to my house, but I'm going to have processed food. You know, so, I mean, people like to give me a hard time about it, but I, I am very passionate about it. And, um, you know, so passionate that our door prize for the, the latest health fair was a 13-week coaching program on weight loss. And we usually charge $200 for that. Um, and so, but we're doing it for free. And I just, I want more people that want to lose weight and want to eat healthier to come see us because I mean, that is where I see us going is we have got to, to move to health and focusing on, you know, your 15 prescriptions that you take every day. And are you taking them correctly? Yes, it's going to help you, but we also need to figure out how can we change your lifestyle so you don't have to take 15 medications. And as you mentioned at the beginning, a, a healthier person and a healthier uh, populace in the country is a better populace. So you, you can be a better parent, a better student, a better anything if you're healthy and feeling good. If you're not feeling good and not healthy, it's hard to accomplish any of the things that, that really are the important things in life. It's hard to do anything. I mean, and it's what's so sad is that so many people have felt not good for so long that they think that that's normal. And they don't realize how bad they feel until we can correct some things and really get you feeling better and then you're like oh my gosh I can't believe that I felt that bad and I didn't even know it I mean you just get so used to it that you just kick along thinking this is how it's supposed to be oh you know I'm turning 40 and I'm supposed to be a little overweight and I'm not supposed to sleep as good as I used to and it, no no that's not true so I mean I, I joked a few years ago about two years ago I decided that I wanted to be in better shape at 40 than I was when I was 20 now when I was 20 a lot of people know I was training for equestrians for the Olympics I was pretty fit I had an injury last year and, um, you know, still preach the same diet and exercise, but I got to where my, my pants were a little tight and I thought, okay, I'm preaching all this stuff and I sort of kind of follow it, but I'm really going to follow it. Well, I dropped 20 pounds in the last seven weeks and I've, you know, been doing my workouts and so I'm, I'm going to be 40 very soon. I'm not going to say exactly when. I'm sure my staff will let you know. I'm sure, it'll, you know, they'll do something um, just to embarrass me, but, you know, I am on track to that and so if I can feel as good or better at 40 than I did when I was 20, there's no reason why everybody else can't do it too. All right. Anything else we need to cover? Medicare D enrollment. Please do not be satisfied with your current Medicare D plan because it may change on you next year. So if you are unsure about that um, or not sure where to look, where to go, please do not let some strange person into your home to sign you up for a Medicare D plan because it may not be the right one for you. But by all means, call Medica Pharmacy and ask questions. We can help you pick out the right plan. We do not bias. We just show you all the plans out there and, and rank them down from the top, you know, three to six. 
and then let you choose which pan you think is right. So um, that enrollment's right around the corner, um, October 15th. So if you haven't thought about it, please start calling in. We can start looking at those plans right now to get you signed up so that you don't have any delay in your coverage come first of the year. Okay, so the enrollment starts on the 15th of October. Yes. When does it end, end of the year? December, no, December 15th, okay. December 1st. You know, that's a good question. I forgot, but I think it's December 1st, and it might be the 15th because it used to be the end of the year. Well, then January 1's there, and you don't have your new card, and it's just crazy. So they did move it up to ensure that you have everything set for the next year. So you can stay with your current plan most of the time, but sometimes they change dramatically. So please just check your options. Okay. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming in today on this pre-recorded show of For Your Health, a presentation of medical pharmacy. Allison Schwartz, our guest, and thank you very much. Thank and, you for having and, me. And again, a very important month with uh, Breast yeah, Cancer Breast Cancer Awareness Month yep. and National Pharmacist, Pharmacist Month. month. Yeah, yep. so, and Medicare so. D-enrollment. And then, you know, call your legislators and tell them to get their head out of the sand. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, to, I just had to say something. You had to say something. <laughs> I'm glad you chose Sam. Okay. <laughs> Sam, yes, yeah, so and the, the other options would not have been so good on TV, I guess, or not, radio. Or radio. <laughs> yeah. Allison, have a good day. Thanks, Rob.